Hey folks, Ray at BCGrammarica.com. Today we've got a review of the new Garmin HRM Duel. This was just announced right now, like this exact same second that you're seeing this, it was announced. But I've actually been using it for about a month or so now, uh, and it's it's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna try to keep this video relatively simple because it's a heart race trap. Like it's not that complex. And since it's not really even a complex heart race trap either. Oh, and before we get too far along the way here, if you find this interesting, whack that like button, it really helps out the channel. And if you're new around here, the subscribe button instead, or like with it, I guess. Atrium Dual, it's super simple. Dual Amp Plus and Bluetooth Smart concurrently. And we're done here. That's that's pretty much it. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, this is it right here. Uh, still a little bit sweaty from my bike ride. Um, but it's it looks almost identical to the previous Garmin uh, heart rate strap that you see right here. The only difference, if you look at them closely, is that this has like this um, grooved pattern all the way across it. There's, I'm sure, like some interior decorator that has a better term for that. This just simply has a single line all the way across it. That's, that's it from an exterior standpoint. The straps uh, appear to be identical. That, that's that part there. The pod pops off right here, uh, just like it did previously. And then on the back here, uh, it does say AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. Um, and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, of course, this isn't the first Garmin Dual Amp Plus and Bluetooth Smart product. In fact, the first was Garmin Vector Three. Now, I guess 18 months or so ago. Uh, and the reason they they added Bluetooth Smart to it at the time that they noted was because primarily of Zwift. They said that more and more people were training indoors with with Zwift, and in turn using that on iOS devices in particular, um, which meant that that required Bluetooth Smart. Whereas a lot of Android devices do actually support Amp Plus. Uh, of course, Garmin owns Amp Plus. Uh, they own Dynastream, now renamed uh, Garmin Canada, but that's still all AMP Plus at the end of the day. Um, though AMP Plus has like, I don't know, three or four hundred member companies, uh, including plenty of plenty of companies out there. Uh, almost every single sports tech company in the world, except for pretty much Apple uh, these days, is or has been a member of AMP Plus. So um, that really isn't like a, a huge deal, I think, these days anymore. Now, of course, this is just the basic heart rate strap. Um, what I mean by that is that it just simply broadcasts your heart rate over AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart concurrently. Uh, it does not broadcast cadence. It does not store any data on there. This is not a replacement for like the HRM run that Garmin has had on the AMP Plus side that broadcasts run dynamics information. It's not a replacement for the HRM try that's used uh, swimming to record the swimming data or the HRM swim that does the same thing but more for open water swims. Um, it is totally waterproof. Uh, it's waterproof to one ATM, which is basically three meters. Uh, and essentially, if you're going below, you know, one meter, sorry, if you're going below uh, one meter, you know, this isn't really sort of strapped for you, um, but that's just fine. It's never really been an issue of waterproofing for triathletes and whatnot to date. So to kind of show you how it works in terms of pairing and stuff like that, I've got uh, an Edge 820 here. Um, and so all I got to do is just get into the sensors menu. Let's see if I can do this like this. Sensors menu, it's a bit weird to do this upside down, by the way. So I'm going to go down to add sensor right there. Um, press enter once, then we'll go down to heart rate, press enter. Uh, and then now it's going to see my different heart rate ones. And I had rubbed these earlier, by the way, fun little trick if you're trying to like pair a heart rate sensor but don't want to put it on, just simply take it on the pads right there and just rub it real quick with your fingers like this. And it's uh, magic, kind of cool. Uh, so in this case, it is the heart rate sensor ID, not that one, but the next one down right there. So I'm going to click on add sensor. There we go. And I'm, I'm done, and that's all there is to it. Um, and the same is true on Bluetooth Smart. So for example, here is Zwift, and you can see it on the Zwift pairing screen. It's listed as HRM Dual over Bluetooth Smart. Uh, once I click on that, it, it connects. And I've been using it, as I mentioned, for the last month or so. And I've used it across a lot of different devices, actually. So I've used it on Zwift, on Apple TV, as well as iOS. I've used it on Trainer Road, on uh, iOS. I've used it on this Polar Vantage M um, as well. I've used it on the Stages Dash on Bluetooth to Smart and on AMP Plus. Um, I've used it on a whole crap ton of Garmin's on AMP Plus. Uh, I've pretty much just used it a lot. Uh, and from a like technical standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. Like AMP Plus is AMP Plus heart rate pairing. It's one of the very first profiles out there. Well known, well understood. Bluetooth Smart is the exact same way as well. Well known, well understood. Uh, really no issues there. So what about accuracy? Well, don't worry. Let's dive into that now. Okay, so here we are within the DCR Analyzer. We're going to look at four different sets, uh, three runs, one bike ride, and it's going to kind of get more difficult through each one, essentially. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the first one. This is a run I did, uh, and the teal green color there, that's the uh, Garmin HRM Dual. I've got to compare it to a Coros Apex optical heart rate sensor and a Polar Vantage M optical heart rate sensor. Uh, you can see that in this case, the 
Garmin Atrium Dual actually ramps up properly, probably the quickest of them, which is good. The other two are horrible, they just lag a little behind. Uh, and in the middle here, the Polar Vantage goes off the rails, kind of the norm. Uh, the Apex though follows along. Right here, all of them dip when I would go ahead and basically stop to take a picture at the Leaving Las Vegas sign. And then for the rest of the run, they're all pretty close to each other, all pretty much the same. A couple of bobbles from the Polar, but uh, from the Atrium Dual standpoint, no problems on this run. So let's go ahead and look at the next run here. This run I did uh, just a couple of days ago, and what you notice right away uh, is that the nice clean ramp right there, the polar goes off the rails again, uh, but the Atrium Duel is pretty good. Now you may be wondering about this little bump right here in the middle and saying, ah, did the Atrium Duel go off the rails there? And no, actually it didn't. So this was a case where I went ahead and I went up a short little hill, uh, and not very hard, very long, but just enough to bump the heart rate a bit more than it was initially. And you can see that the Atrium Duel correctly captured that, where the other sensors, they lag behind and the polar actually went down. Down for some reason. Uh, for the rest of the run, the Atrium Duel is where I expected it to be, and if you took away that brown from the, the Polar Vantage M on this run, you would see that the Apex and the Atrium Duel are actually pretty darn close to each other, and throughout this run, what I see for the Garmin strap matches my perceived effort the closest. Next, we'll look at a uh, ride here. This is out in the desert of Las Vegas. And this is interesting for a couple reasons, that primarily when it comes to heart rate straps, they struggle the most when it's dry and cool, and on top of that, windy. And this is exactly what this ride was. It's, of course, in the middle of winter in the, in the desert, so it's not really hot and steamy. And so in this case, uh, it was not very much above freezing um, and super dry, super cool, and a fair bit windy. So I wasn't gonna accumulate much sweat on myself. I only had a kind of just, a, I didn't have a coat on or anything, so I was definitely ill-prepared for this but it makes it really interesting from a data standpoint because that's the exact scenario the heart rate straps typically have problems with. Still, you see things are pretty good here from the heart rate strap standpoint. It, it nearly mirrors the Polar Vantage M, which was surprisingly actually working on this particular ride. Um, the Coros, meanwhile, was lost in space down there in that teal color. Uh, and then throughout this here, pretty good, pretty good, no problems. Uh, Coros again goes off the rails in this little section. Dip down here where I stopped to take some photos, uh, and then ramp up really nice and clean. And this is where you see some of the differences. So if I zoom in right there, you'll see that the purple ramps up faster. That's the HRM Dual definitely ramping up faster than the optical sensors of the other two. Not all optical sensors are, are delayed, but many of them are when they're not too super proper. Uh, and then throughout the rest of the ride, the Polar uh, Vantage M and the HRM Dual are pretty darn close to each other. So then I've got this last run we did just this morning, just a few hours ago, three hours ago in fact. Um, and this teaches me to do one last workout before uh, I release a review. It seems like whenever I do this, things go horribly wrong. And that was definitely the case here today. Uh, so initially right there, this first part on the ramp, the first uh, four or five minutes, that was because I did not wet the strap. Uh, I had actually wetted the strap when I left the house, but not by the time I got down to the waterfront where I was running on, so it was dry again. When I looked down and realized that about the four or so minute marker, you can see it quickly ramp back up again, and then it was good to go throughout the warm up, and then into the first interval, no problems there. But the second, third, fourth, fifth interval, you can see the teal, which is the Atrium Dual in this one. I apologize, the colors change each time. But you can see the, the teal one there uh, definitely drops below almost every single time. Some sort of lock issue, it's just not clicking on, which is really weird. I haven't seen this in any other runs uh, at all. And then I, I did adjust the strap here between the fifth and the sixth interval, and that's when you see it's super clean for the sixth interval. The seventh, this is a, an 800 meter one, no problems at all. The eighth, no problems at all. Uh, the ninth and the tenth interval, also no problems at all from the atrium dual standpoint. The polar and the yellow there is, is it's the polar. Um, so overall from an accuracy standpoint, with the exception of you know these four intervals right here, it's been really good for me for last month. Uh, a lot of like hard riding on uh, both train road and Zwift races, all that stuff, it's been spot on. So I'm guessing this would have just had it like in the wrong spot or something. Uh, you know, this kind of thing you would definitely notice. Um, and that would be something that's kind of easy to correct by adjusting it like I did there. Okay, so there you go. Last but not least, the battery life is a claimed 3.5 years, which is pretty darn impressive, at which point you just pop this thing off, take the four screws, yank out the coin cell battery, and put a new one in, and a dollar later, you're good to go. Kind of cool. Price-wise, it's 69 bucks, which it's honestly, that's a little expensive. Um, if you look at the rest of the dual heart rate straps out there on the market today, they don't have any special sauce. Like, Wahoo's Ticker X and Ticker Run and whatever else, uh, they have special sauce. They have other things they do, like features and storage and stuff like that. 
The Four Eyes uh, Viva straps have lots of extra sauce, and I think they're even priced the same price or cheaper than this. Um, there's lots of other straps out there that do kind of cool things, like the Polar H10 strap, for example, does not have AMP Plus in it, uh, but does have dual Bluetooth smart channels in it. So that's another example of something kind of special and unique there. Uh, anyways, so for 69 bucks, it's frankly overpriced, uh, but I suspect the thing here isn't really so much targeting like those who want to buy a brand new Garmin strap by themselves. It's really more about bundles for Garmin. It's the fact that you're going to be able to buy uh, their watches down the road and whatever else, and it's going to come with this strap in it as opposed to this strap in it. Um, so it's likely as simple as that. Uh, so while it is overpriced, like for that, that price point, I would probably just recommend picking up the general Wahoo ticker strap. So no like X or run or anything fancy after that, just the ticker does the exact same thing. One channel AMP plus, one channel Bluetooth smart and done. This strap is a little more comfortable than that strap. Um, it doesn't tend to cut along the bottom there the way they've designed it versus the Wahoo one isn't quite as good there uh, for some people, but it just depends on, on you. Otherwise, it's that's that. It's available today. Uh, I did ask about other other straps and stuff like that, and like what the plan is there. Um, and they they were sort of cages you might expect, but they they basically said that you know they recognize the need for dual sensors across the board, and that this is their starting point. Um, so just take that with what it is. We'll see what happens there. Um, I would guess that like if you were planning on buying like an HRM Try or whatever else. Uh, I probably wouldn't rush out to the store to buy that today and to see what happens over the next while. Typically, Garmin refreshes uh, like the triathlon scene products in the spring most of the time, like in the April, May time frame. So maybe something to consider as well. We'll have to see. Anyways, there you go. Just a complete look at things. Hope you found this interesting. Have a good one.